As you know, water extraction is a highly regulated activity by the state of Maine and is a permitted use in this state. In order to receive a permit, a company or an individual desirous of extracting water on a commercial basis must meet very exacting requirements. Once these state requirements are met and a permit is issued, water extraction at the desired location may commence. It matters not that the town or city in which the extraction is to take place allows it, the water extraction can proceed. It therefore seems logical and to me makes common sense that the town or city that has an ordinance in place to regulate the withdrawal will be light years ahead. We in Wells are fortunate to have such an ordinance ready to be put forward to the voters for acceptance in November. Every successful business, and for that matter, fa successful family, plans ahead for contingencies, and towns and cities should do so as well. The Ordinance Review Committee, chaired by Mr. Will Gosby, worked long and hard to craft this ordinance, and it is one that will treat all parties fairly, will lend responsible regulation to this activity, and will stand the test of time. Rather than muddy the waters with needless amendments, I urge both boards to put it forth as written to the voters for approval in November. I could go on and on about Maine's proven water reserves, the attributes of the company that wants to extract water in the town of Wells, and the use of fear tactics by some to attempt to convince you that wells will run dry if extraction of a very small percentage of the water that is headed for the Atlantic Ocean is bottled and sold, but I will not in the interest of time. I'm just here uh, as one person that's concerned about where the power ends up, because when this is all said and done, it's, it's going to give power to somebody more than somebody else, or, or you wouldn't be trying to safeguard your town. This issue is way beyond the scope of just the little town of Wells. It's way beyond the state of Maine. This is the issue, the issue of water and its scarcity sir. and increasing sir. scarcity. Yes, sir. sir. What's before this board, or these two boards tonight, is the ordinance that is proposed. Uh, we cannot uh, go into issues of international trade or multinational issues. If you wish to comment on the ordinance, I, I would appreciate it. But uh, to, to talk about what we can't do is not particularly helpful to either board tonight. So, if you can There's a line in the movie The Wizard of Oz. Its magnet must be very powerful or else they wouldn't want it so badly. To paraphrase, the magnet, of course, refers to our water supply here in Wells, and they refers to Nestle, <coughs> the large corporation hoping to capitalize on our magical water source known as the Branch Brook Aquifer. With this in mind, a small group of concerned Wells citizens undertook the task of surveying a random sample of residents and property owners who were at least 18 years old. The survey was conducted by different people on different days and in different parts of town. We went to the transfer station, Moody Post Office, Wells Post <coughs> Office, one church, and also directly contacted residents by going door to door in many different neighborhoods. We spoke with hundreds of residents, passed out pamphlets containing questions and answers, and got signatures on the survey. On this survey, we asked only one question. Are you in favor of allowing commercial large-scale water extraction in the town of Wells? This was to be answered simply yes or no. Our results are as follows. For our sample size, we had a total of 356 <coughs> residents, or people, citizens, the total yes, was 21. Total no, 335. The percentage of no's is 94.1%. The results of our poll allow us to say that there's a 99% probability that over 90% of residents who are eligible to vote are against allowing commercial large-scale water extraction in the town of Wells. The results are quite clear that large-scale water extraction is not wanted here. This envelope contains the names and addresses 
of the hundreds of residents that we got signatures from. I'm presenting these here tonight so that these concerned people are recognized and have their opinions heard in the event that they could not be here and did not wish to speak themselves. I will now pass these to Mr. Clark and for his consideration. Strict sound science also relies on observation. So what have we seen in the past? A bottling company, I believe it was named Northwoods, operated over in Wire Road a while back extracting water. Several domestic wells failed in the nearby neighborhood in the same time period. Two weeks ago, I had the pleasure of talking with one of the homeowners whose well failed. It cost him $10,000 to replace the well. I have witnessed the replacement, the need of replacement of three domestic wells in my own neighborhood in the last two or three years. Given these observations, does it sound like we have an excess of accessible water? We've been told that State 38 MSRA 44 will allow us some protection if our well goes dry. I would bet you have to go to court to get remuneration. I would ask, is Nestle willing to post an insurance bond with a town to provide compensation for anyone's well who fails? I also would hope that the town officials when they conduct the November vote, that the vote will be written, secret ballot, conducted over an 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. time span in order to ensure that the vote is taken without distraction and without outside interference. Uh, I have been researching large-scale water extraction, and I have discovered many disputes concerning large-scale water extraction between small towns and large corporations. I do not want to see any large corporation come into our town, take our water, and sell it at our expense. I do not believe our water supply is unlimited. <clears throat> These large corporations will meet their needs first. This so-called regulatory ordinance is not for us. It allows large-scale water extraction that will not be regulated to benefit this town. I urge our selectmen to take more time and find a way to keep large-scale water extraction out of our town. The comment is we keep hearing Poland Springs. Poland Springs of 160 years ago is not <coughs> the Poland Springs of today, it's Nestle. And I think most of us here know that. So any agreement is really with Nestle, that's just a comment. The question is, I think many of us feel that a large population of the town is against large scale extraction. So if the town is against large, the citizens against large scale, um, scale extraction, why are we doing a regulation? That's just a question. And the other question is, Mr. Clark said that if, this, if it does go through tonight and the, the proposal that will be on the November ballot, will there also be something on the November ballot, a yes or no vote on large scale extraction? That's that uh, Mr. Houston is passing out were taken yesterday of uh, the Poland Springs tanker trucks going down Route 95 south to Framingham. And, and for the audience benefit, here's a picture of a well-known landmark is the York, the York toll booth. This is the tanker heading south. But more specifically, uh, Board of Selectmen, Planning Board of uh, Town of Wells, I would like to speak this evening on the subject of how the proposed water extraction ordinance is seen to create and protect jobs in the Wells community. We have heard a lot of advertising information coming from Poland Springs on how they are capable of creating new jobs in Maine. If that is, if that is the case, then why are they presently shipping bulk water out of Maine via their 8,000 gallon tanker trucks on a regular basis to their bottling plant in Framingham, Massachusetts. All summer long, you can witness a steady stream of tanker trucks going south out of the York Tolbooths, bound for Massachusetts. The, the photos that I've just handed out demonstrates that fact. There's photos taken at the York County to, uh, York toll booth. There's photos taken at the Hampton toll booth. There's photos taken at the Bali plant in Framingham, Massachusetts. 
Simply put, you can see the water and the jobs are already leaving the state. I will ask the Board of Selectmen, how does this ordinance create or protect perceived job creation in the town of Wells? To use a visual, I'll take it away when I'm done. When I moved to Wells six years ago, I used to pick up seashells. Now I walk along the beach and pick up trash, most in the form of plastic food wrappers, plastic water bottles, and plastic bottle caps. 